Throughout the year, we host The Dan Patrick Show at our studio in New York City, which is awesome because I get to step back into one of my favorite neighborhoods in the world, the Lower East Side. Manitoba's is a museum filled with the rock and roll history of the Lower East Side. And the curator of this museum is none other than handsome Dick Manitoba of the Dictators. What do you want, boys? Do I take a recommendation, Brooklyn? Yep. Hey, that was going to be my recommendation. All right, there you go. Part of what the piece is about is Lower East Side and the neighborhood and how much it's changed over the years. I feel you've probably seen so many different versions of it. 60s, 70s, 80s, I 90s, really they all have different, they're all different decades and they all have different sort of identities for this neighborhood, it seems like. And you've been here for all of them. I came in on, you know, how Chuck Berry handed over rock and roll to the Rolling Stones. Well, they handed it over to the hippies, and that's where I came in. I started going to the Fillmore East when I was 15 in 1979. And um, that's when I started knowing, feeling a kinship with this neighborhood. I, I mean, I didn't consciously say, I'm going to live here, but I felt the kinship, and mm. I kept coming back and back. We would file in my friend Gary Powell's father's uh, Mustang, like eight of us, and come downtown drinking quarts of beer and uh, go down to concerts. Like, you know, I mean, it was so spoiled. Like, the Who are playing this week? Want to go see the Who? It's five bucks. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so and so is playing this week at the Palladium uh, or at the Academy of Music before the Palladium. And we had a, an endless array of spoiled brat kids who had an endless array of concerts. You know, they came, everyone came to New York City's backyard. And this was, this was for all artists, bohemians, musicians, writers, poets. This is what it was for, I had a great history. There was the Yiddish theater here back in, I guess, the 30s, 40s. So you see how everything was passed down. And my father, I came home and I go, Dad, I just saw the who for $5 at the floor. He didn't go. Wow, Rich, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, he was an old time. He goes, I saw Sinatra at the Paramount for 350. You play a, a certain role in history, and you're at all these different times, whether it's, say, Punk Magazine, which they, you know, dictators take like, credit for its being the inspiration, yeah. part of the inspiration for that. Um, is it because you lived in it and you were so involved in it? Or is it just more your personality to not get caught up in sort of what was and just live in what's now? I am very nostalgic about my entire life. I don't know how you can't be. Mm. You know, I go to the Museum of the City of New York and I see Mickey Mantle's 1951 jersey made out of wool. And I come to tears. I see pictures of murals of women with those pointy sunglasses and I see my grandmother from Poland like going, Mickey Mantle, Mickey Mantle, you know, like, and then she's dead. So I cry because as we get older, we cry because of little deaths in our lives. The death of a grandmother, the death of an era, the death of a bar, the death of, there's all these little deaths that lead up to our final death. And the older you get, and the more you see your mortality, I think to me, the more emotional I get because it's like one of those movies, I look at it very self-consciously, like I'm riding in a bus looking out the window, and I, I see my reflection in the window, and I just see my life go by. I accept change. People come to me and go, oh, man, change used to be so cool when I was here in 1999, <laughs> the old days. Yeah. You know? And I go, look at that history. Change, change, change. New York. You get stuck out in the Midwest. They're still 20 years old. They don't change. They, they go, change. I love when people say, hey, Richie, remember back in the day? Yeah. I say, excuse me, no offense. <laughs> but my back in the day was not 1988. Yeah, no. It was 1968. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your friends are legends, you know? I mean, like, if you talk to some of the people, you're like, ah, oh, this guy's a friend of mine, or this, I'm here with so-and-so, and, oh, Debbie Harry, and everybody, I mean, that. It's like the stuff that uh, museums are made of or Hall of Fames and things like that. Yeah, we've lived long enough to get certain accolades. The Runaways, Clash, Iggy, Thunders, autographed picture from my gorgeous friend, Deborah Harry. You know, people come up to me and go, like, you're a legend. It makes me feel uncomfortable because even though I'm not a great humble man and, and I am an egomaniac at times, 
I really look at myself as like a blue collar rocker. At 63, I get in vans, I, I, I'm doing 12 shows, 12 cities in a row. Me and Iggy autographed. We, we were fighting one of the first dictator gigs ever, The Clash with the original drummer, Miriam Linner. Ramones, very early version of The Pistols. The great Arturo Vega, rest his soul from the Ramones. We get in a van, we have fun, we make a couple of bucks, we sell a couple of t-shirts, and I'm blessed that people still want to see the band at this era, at this stage, and that I get to play Europe twice a year. I get to go to like 17 countries in Europe twice a year. Come on. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I'm not in it, but my memorabilia is in it. Cover of Punk Magazine, first dictator ad ever. Johnny Cash, Joan Jett. Me sitting and talking to Dave, to Ray Davies at the Tavern on the Green. I got it signed 20 years later when we did a concert together in Northern Spain. So I don't play Master Square Garden, I don't care. I don't care what I, bat I don't have, I care about what I have. Is baseball your sport, Yankees? Baseball is my sport. Baseball is so part of my DNA, my fiber. My dad and I, we grew up in the Bronx. He took me to Yankee Stadium. I saw Mickey Mantle getting out of a limousine, going to the players' entrance, and it was just like, basically, I didn't know nothing about God. I was forced to go to synagogue. I don't know. I, you know, I did what the family told me. But when I saw Mickey Mantle walk out of that limousine, that was God. But I don't have the time. I watch my Yankee games, I watch my UFC. I'm writing songs, I'm running the bar, I'm, I'm traveling around the world with my rock and roll band, the Dictators NYC. There's a You're lot busy. on my plate. Yeah. I'm uh, over 60 years old, but I love it. Look at my energy. I love it, man. I love being busy, busy with things I love. Yeah. You wake up in the morning, oh, I gotta drive a kid. You wake up in the morning, I got my bar, I got my band, I'm traveling around the world to Europe twice this year. Dictators NYC. I'm going up to do five shows. Little Steven said, I'll pay you money to be handsome Dick Manitoba. Come on! Yeah. How can I not be excited about good. my life? Do you ever look down the road and think about the neighborhood and where you see it going or how it's going to change the next I'm generation? not that smart to know the, the depth of economics. I just can't imagine that once the aforementioned realtors and bankers are rubbing their hands and have put up these buildings, they're going to go, ah, the hell with it. Let's get out of here. Sometimes, out of that kind of development and progress and horrific political climates comes great art. A lot of rebellion and, yeah. and great art. I don't know if it's gonna lower the rents, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of wisdom from that dude, huh? I don't know that I've ever, there was one point that he was actually talking literally to me, people exactly like me, like, dude, get over it. Forget about it, it's over, it's gone. Like, oh my God, that's me. That's exactly who I am. I did like though that he's more focused on what he does have and not what he doesn't have. You can hold on to memories, but at a certain point, you gotta let go of the past. You can't live in the past anymore. You have to live in this moment. These are the only days that we have. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.